DJ Pro has so many settings that you can adjust and customize the app to fit your specific needs for your style of DJ. And in this video, I am gonna go over what every single setting does. So to get to our settings, we're gonna press the middle button over here. And you may be in modes. This is where you can go from classic to pro mode and all the other modes, but we wanna to get to our settings. So it is going to be down here to the right settings. And then we have this settings menu. I am gonna go over all the settings in this settings menu. I'm not gonna go through the drop down menus throughout the other screens of the app. I did that in a lot of other videos. So first of all, we have pretty obvious is our master volume. Second is our microphone. You could use the microphone on your app to do different things or to use the Shazam feature. So you could turn on your microphone like that or turn it off and adjust the volume. Now we are in to the settings. So we have audio device settings. So this is gonna control your main outputs, your pre queuing your booth monitoring, and your microphone. So the first thing that we have over here is main output. This is where you're going to change what where the sound is going. So I have nothing plugged into my iPad now. So it is saying speaker, that is the iPad. Next is pre-queuing. This is going to be different depending on what you have plugged into your iPad. If you have a controller that has a microphone output, you will see that here. It'll give you the option. And then if you plan on using a headphone splitter cable, then you are going to have to go over here to your, you're gonna have to go in your settings, audio devices, pre-queuing, and then split output. This is gonna split the output so you could use your headphone splitter. Booth, I don't think a lot of people that use this app are gonna use the booth output, but you could have a separate output uh, pointing towards you while you're DJing so you can monitor the music instead of just having the speakers that are facing away from you. So if you're doing like a big club or a wedding or a Sweet 16 or something, this may be beneficial to you. And then also down here, we can control our microphone. You could use an external microphone or you can use the microphone on your specific device. And if you wanna set everything back to default, you press this one, reset to default. So that is your audio device settings. These are very important. Next is going to be general, pretty obvious, it's your general settings. Song loading, start playback. This one is gonna automatically be set and it is really annoying. Every time you load up a song, it's gonna immediately start playing. So I don't know why anyone would have this setting on. If you like it, you could leave it on, but I turn that off because it's really annoying to load up a song and have it start playing immediately. Reset. EQ and FX. That means that every time you load up a different song, the EQ and the effects are going to go back to where they were. So for example, we have the, this EQ, all, all of this and effects are on for this track. And then we load up another one. See that everything goes back to where it was. Now, if we turn that off and if we turn it off, now we have, look at these settings that I have. Now I'm gonna to go to a different song. Then our EQs and our FX stay the same. Again, I don't know why anyone would do that. I think it makes sense to have everything reset when you switch tracks. Next is protect active deck. So if a track is playing on the active deck, so this song is playing, this deck is active, there's music coming out of it. If I go to change the song on the same deck, it's gonna give us this. You are about to load a song onto an active deck. Do you wanna proceed? This protects you from loading a song on the wrong side and it protects you from making big DJ mistakes by playing the, by getting rid of a song that you were playing when you didn't want to get rid of it. So definitely keep that on. It's just an added safety feature and there's no reason not to have it on. Activate save loop one. That means when you load up a song that has a save loop, you see how it activated this save loop up here. So if you use a lot of save loops, then you may want to keep that on. I don't use save loop that much, so I'm gonna keep it off. Next we have jump to cue point. You could either choose the start cue, cue point one, or the earliest cue point. So this is where you're gonna start with your cue points. I recommend leaving it on start cue. Sync mode, you can adjust the way the sync works. You can change it to BPM only or BPM and beats. It's up to you. The BPM and beats is gonna do its best to align the beats so that the song is beat matched together. 
BPM will only match the two BPM. Beat sync interval, you could change it from one beat to four beats. I find four beats makes it more even and it sounds better. But again, that is where you can change it. Maintain sync on song load. So if you want it to stay on sync when you load up the song, you can have this setting on. Exit sync on pause, scratch, or cue jump. So this is if you plan on doing scratches or if you plan on doing cue jumps, then it is going to exit the sync. The range. This is another really important one. This is going to allow you to adjust the BPM either more or less or be more precise. So you can go from eight, which means you have more control and could be more precise, but you could only go 8% up or 8% down with the BPM, which I find to be a little bit too low for my style of DJing. I like to do big BPM switches. If you go all the way to 75, it's like as soon as you touch it, it goes too much and it's way too sensitive. So what I highly recommend is that you leave it somewhere in the middle, either 16 or 25. I would say 25, but this is completely up to you and your style of DJing. Invert slider, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Stop, play, and pause. This may be pre-selected. What this does is it's like the motor of the turntable is like starting up. And then you can control the crossfader effects over here. Auto play while moving the crossfader. And then also the, the sync. DVS. I don't have the equipment for the DVS, so I can't really show you that much, but this is where you will turn on your DVS. Sound, crossfader cur curve, I have it on default, it is in sound and then crossfader curve. EQ type, classic or isolator, it's different if, if you, again, if you use other softwares that have an isolator EQ, you may be used to it. I recommend keeping it on classic. Neuromix EQ, this is for the stem separating software built into the app. You could have it drums, harmonics, vocals, or drums, bass, and harmonics. This depends on your style of DJing and the genre of music that you're playing. I recommend leaving it on drums, harmonics, and vocals. Filter resonance. I like to keep it on high. FX routing, post fader, or pre fader. So if you plan on doing echo outs and having uh, maybe a reverb out or having the effect play after you're done with the song, then leave this on. Audio limiter, this is another safety feature so you don't break anybody's speakers. Auto gain, keep this on. If you're using this app, you are not going to be adjusting the gain on your own. pre and auto select, when you're using headphones, if you move the crossfader to the left, it's going to put the headphone pre queuing to the right. If you move the crossfader to the right, it's going to put the headphone pre queuing to the left so that you don't have to press a button or do anything. It does it automatically and it does a really great job at it. So leave this on. Now we have library. This one is remove songs from queue. If you use the queue section of your playlist, this will remove the song so you don't play them twice. It's really cool. Show keys in different color. This is going to make the keys different color. See these. Every time I change the key, it's a different color. And then also here in the library section, if you want to log out of the streaming service, maybe you're in the wrong uh, the wrong account for your streaming service, this is where you're going to log out. And then with title, you could adjust the quality appearance, cue point style. So here are our cue points. This is what it looks like. This is high contrast. If you put it on low contrast, it just makes the button the color. I like having the whole thing the color. It looks really cool and it's easy for you to be organized with your cue points. So I keep it on high contrast. Start cue button. You can have it set and jump or you could just have it cue. So with set and jump, it is this cue button here. So you could set wherever you choose to set it. That is where it is going to stay. Now, if we change that to just cue, we lose that set button. Now the jog wheels. This is going to control the jog wheels inside of Pro Mode. So here we are in Pro Mode. We have these jog wheels. Now if we go over here, this one is extended. You can have compact light, compact dark. I just think, think extended looks the best. Vinyl tape marker. This is going to put tape on where you put your cue points. It's pretty cool. Show full artwork picture discs show full artwork on this you see how that's selected look at this artwork over here on this disc and now it's in the middle so this is where you're going to change the vinyl so vinyl with it not selected you just get the label on the middle if you want the full artwork now it's the whole platter waveforms you could have the minute marker it's just another piece of information it help it's helpful but it may be confusing so you might want to deselect it there's not too much in advanced. Neural mix, you could adjust the quality. This is not able, this is determined by your device. My device, this is the 2018 
iPad Pro, this device can only get 80% quality. On Neuromix, the better the device, the newer the chip inside it is, then you can get it all the way up to 100. And then also if it's a, an older iPad, it'll be less than this. MIDI devices, this is where you're gonna go to connect your MIDI devices and to map them. So if you're using a Bluetooth MIDI device, this is where you are gonna find it. You can adjust crossfader cutting mode. So when you're using a controller, you just move the crossfader a tiny bit and it cuts the crossfader. You can invert the crossfader or you can start your motorized jog wheels. Also scan for MIDI devices if it didn't pick it up. And then here you could see your supported MIDI devices there. You could go to the website and see a whole list of supported MIDI devices. So that is the end of all of our settings. Down here are some other things. Ableton Link, this allows you to DJ and connect either multiple devices to DJ Pro or multiple apps at the same time, such as Remix Live and other beat making apps and uh, they will be in sync with each other so you could have multiple devices it's really cool and i made a whole video about it so if you want to learn more about ableton link check out this video over here